you all so much for being here today. Um, if you want to catch the uh, presentation outline, it's in the back. There's a piece of paper, actually. Good old-fashioned paper. Uh, so I put the whole thing up on my blog if you want to look at it electronically or follow along or if you want to click a link. Um, so everything is on shadengun.net, apps for jazzers, it's the top of the page. And so the categories of what we're going to go over are, um, first we're going to talk about utilities. And when I say 10 apps, I mean pick one, I guess, from each category. <laughs> um, sheet music, um, including like management within a, a tablet and how to share sheet music across the band, including flipping pages across devices. Um, notation apps, transcribing. Band director apps, that's like music theory, that kind of stuff. Things you can use to, for pedagogical purposes. Um, let's see, uh, lead sheet resources, pedals and effects, synthesizers, looping, recording, and then a deep dive into apps for live performance. So that's what we're gonna go over today. My name is Shannon Gunn, if you came in late, go to shannongunn.net if you wanna catch all these links. And uh, I have, I'm really looking forward to doing this. I've been doing this for three or four years at the uh, National Jazz Workshop. So, um, I put my presentation proposal together, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity to uh, present this at Jed now, so this is awesome. All right, so uh, going on, I'm going to scroll down here. All right, so um, the first app I'd like to talk about, first I'm going to talk about metronomes, and I see a lot of people using the Frozen 8 Tempo, which is the um, kind of like the app of choice. Ooh, it's loud. <laughs> I'll turn it down a little bit. So you can set up your uh, time signatures, you can pick different, like Dr. Beat for the, for the uh, app. Um, but the thing that's limiting about uh, Frozen Apes Tempo app is that you can't, um, it, it only gives you a few to use from, at least from what I've been able to find. So the thing that I have kind of picked up on since I started asking questions to people is this Pro Metronome. And uh, this one, you can have unlimited number of beats so like for instance, if I have a tune that I'm practicing in 10-8, I can um, set it up. You can set it up to have the, you know, the different um, accents in different places and that kind of stuff. So I find that to be helpful uh, for the tempo or for the uh, metronome. Obviously there's a lot of other options out there. So these are the two that kind of rose to the top. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about, let me just go back and forth here. So I have links up on my site. Um, a lot of people are using Tunable right now, and this is uh, just a tuner. I'm just gonna start with the utilities, like I said. So the uh, tuner is, uh, there's a lot of different options for your tuners. So this is one that you can use, but it has a couple of unique things about it. Um, it has a pitch pipe, you can sustain. And uh, it has a recording function. So if I click the plus at the bottom, hello. It'll record myself playing, and you can set that up so you can um, share that with your professor or with somebody or yourself or whatever. So as a, uh, as a teacher, that might be helpful for your students to record themselves playing, hopefully in tune. So that's the uh, tunable. And then tonal energy tuner, um, a lot of people are using this now, and also known as TE tuner. And uh, this is the one with the happy face. <laughs> So the band directors like it because the, the students can uh, see if they can play in tune. I don't know if I should try to demonstrate this for y'all, but I'm gonna give it a try. You can see how well I play in tune. <laughs> Um, you can pull it up on whatever device that goes for 
um, smartphones as well as iPads. So that's like having an iPhone, uh, or sorry, a robot with a mobility. Uh, that's, that's very convenient. Um, <laughs> so that's an option for you if you'd like to go there um, for your students. And then moving on to the scanning apps, um, I utilize Cam Scanner. Most people utilize um, TurboScan, I think, but I'm just going to show you Cam Scanner in just a demonstration. Now you're not going to be able to see really well with this. This one's the freebie. Um, you can see I have my signature there at the top. This is an example of something I scanned in, and it's very clear. Um, you just scan it, and I know you can't see very well with the with the iPhone, but when it's on the iPad, it's it's it was readable. It was just as readable as the regular piece of paper. Now the regular piece of paper wasn't very readable, but <laughs> um, this is it was it's been very helpful to me to be able to scan um, scan music in. So um, I want to show you real quick. This is what it looks like even with handwriting. It's not that bad. Um, it's totally doable. I know that it looks. Uh, it might be difficult to see because of the iPhone, but yes, Mr. Antonio. Um, I'm just wondering, the scanning apps versus just taking a picture of something, is there like a real discernible, how, how do you oh, yeah. manage it? The scanning app is way better, and TurboScan is better than Cam Scanner. it's faster. You just take the picture and it automatically, um, especially if you're in low light, it is really awesome. At, I don't know if you can see right here, but there's that little line down there at the bottom. That was probably just a shadow. And it was probably something that, when I took the picture, I couldn't even see the music staves at all. But it just gets rid of all of it and makes it really, really clean. So definitely check out the scanning apps. <laughs> you can also do multi-page PDFs with TurboScan. Yes, well you can do that with Cam Scanner as well. Um, but I think TurboScan's faster. It's just like a little bit more expensive. <laughs> So yeah, but either one would work. So I encourage you guys, and I've done this, I've scanned in entire books. So for instance, I have an all woman big man, and uh, I want to back up a book before I hand it over to somebody. I'll just, next page, next page, just get it in there. Um, and I think that this would be a very helpful thing to have. And then you can share it um, across devices. You can share it as a PDF or a picture. And then, so I'll share this, and I'll put it into my iPad, and then I can share it from my iPad to other places. So. Definitely check out the scanning apps. Absolutely indispensable for band directors. Um, moving on, we have, um, okay, so one of the big pain points for me is like you have to print out contracts and then sign them and then scan them back in. So I've been searching for the perfect signature app. So PDF filler is available, but it costs $19.99 a month, which is a little bit expensive after the first month. The first month's free. So I checked out that first. Um, there's a couple of options. I think that I'm gonna go ahead and settle on Fourscore, which is actually a PDF reading app for that because it does have the ability to write, but I wanted to show you a couple other apps that would work. So good notes. Um, this is a note-taking app. Oh, by the way, it has manuscript as a piece of paper. So if you have an Apple Pencil, you can put this in your tablet, or if you have like a tablet, you can put your, um, you can write your notes with your Apple Pencil. And I am dying to do this because I never have enough manuscript paper. That's <laughs> I'm always fireworks. looking for it. Huh? Fireworks program? Oh, fireworks yeah. program? This is called Good Notes. I might have skipped. So I'm going through like the <coughs> trying to put signatures on, but I got distracted by Good Notes because we have manuscript. But if you pulled a PDF in here, you could grab the pen and then type with you could do your signature with a pen. Um, but what I just recently did, um, I used Notability. And I'm hearing a lot of people are using Notability for um, their lessons. It's like a note-taking app like Evernote. And so I actually did this where I, and Notability, the only thing is, is on the phone, you don't have, oops, sorry, there's my CNN. Uh, you don't have the, um, like the ability to handwrite. So I had to take a picture of my signature and then put that on the on the app. But um, on the iPad or the other device, the tablet device, you can just, it has a really nice signature. Um, you can just click on the pencil icon and then start signing away. So um, Notability is, that was recommended to me by somebody who teaches private lessons. So they use that for private lessons as well as taking notes and, and keeping track of what students are doing. The old fashioned way was like writing it down in their little book. Now you can utilize an app for that. Let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, so another option for you is that app called Side My Pad, and that is um, 
That app is for Android. So I want to make sure I gave you guys both, you know, some people are doing Android, some are iOS, so you have options for both. All right, so that, that's the first category of utilities. And uh, good, we're, right, we're moving right along here. So uh, the second category I wanted to talk about was the uh, sheet music. So I have really fallen in love with Fourscore. Um, it's been very reliable for me, and I use it a lot. So I'm going to pull that up for you. Uh, this is a tune, and I'm not going to do a whole lot of demo. I actually put up three tutorials on my website because I want to give you the tools and I want to give you what you need to be able to find what you're looking for later, but I don't have time to really demonstrate each ind individual app because I have too many that I want to get through. So just know that uh, the uh, Foursquare app allows you to share across devices and I can turn pages across devices. Um, and so that's one part that I really like in addition to doing annotations and you know, you can have set lists and you can share set lists. So I'm gonna just demonstrate that for you really quickly because I think that's really cool. Um, I'm putting this one on Lean, and I'm gonna put this one, I have to get this one on Wi-Fi first. Actually, no, it's gonna take too long because I don't have my Wi-Fi, but basically I can set it up where I lead with this one and when I turn the pages on this or when I pick up a new tune, it goes across all the devices. So if you're in a wedding band, and you have a couple of iPads you can put across the band, then people can watch your page, page turns and stay with the band thing. So I think that's pretty cool. And I use Fourscore for all my originals, um, all of my set lists, um, all my bands, they all have their own like 100 pages of sheet music, all the salsa bands. <laughs> if you ever play with a salsa band, you've got 100 pages to print. So it's very helpful to have something where you can just throw all those PDFs in, throw your set list together, and then just Go down. You can do half page turns. So I, I love Fourscore, and I have tutorials. Like I said, I don't want to spend a lot of time showing how to use it. I just want to show you how to get to what you need. So on this um, website, I have a link to tutorials. And so here's a roundup of all the uh, videos that I've created about Fourscore. So somebody had their hand up. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, is Fourscore, I might as well ask about Unreal Book as well. Um, I suppose mobile, mobile sheets, are they all compatible with iGateBook? Uh, okay, so iGateBook is just for the real books. You can put PDFs in there, but um, and you can put your own personal PDFs, and I've done that, but it's not the most reliable. So uh, one time I went home, I loaded my PDFs in, closed up the iGateBook, you know, brought it to the gig, opened it up, and it didn't save. So that's, I don't rely on it, but it's a very helpful tool when I need it, yeah. Um, back to Foursquare, if theoretically, let's say, I had a small classroom and all the kids had iPads, I could be the conductor and turn the page for Now, uh, can they use Chromebook and an iPad, or is it just one? Like, Foursquare, I think it's just iOS. Just iOS? Yeah, if you look at the handout, it says iOS and or Android on each one and the device. <coughs> so, <coughs> yeah, my, I only have 50 copies, so hopefully that'll be enough. Yeah, so Unreal Book is just like Fourscore. I found that from a friend. They're using it for their set lists. It's, it's got annotations, sharing set lists, sharing PDFs. Um, I'm not sure if it has sharing page terms, but um, Unreal Book does not have the um, iPhone version. And I, find, I never look at the music on the iPhone, but I will pull it up out of my email using my network, and then I can, from there, send it to my other devices via the Air, AirDrop. So, I think it's really helpful to have the uh, iPhone version. Yeah. Can we go back to iGateBook for just a moment? Okay. I'm having I'm having a lot of trouble trying to find uh, B flat for sure PDFs, and uh, the ones that I can find that's great. And you know, it takes a while to get the numbers and the pages to match up. That's okay, but I'm having a difficult time. Do you have any suggestions? Is, is there some place we can purchase the PDFs? <coughs> I was gonna avoid talking about it altogether because I think that might be a copyright issue. So we really do need to be able to purchase those PDFs and I encourage publishers to make that available. Yeah. One of these things is great. Yes, and you, you can use that with Foursquare. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a quick answer. Um, yeah, so going on, um, the uh, another, another one, yes, we're at, what, 15? Yep. Okay. He's keeping my, this is my dad, Cal. Everybody say hi, Cal. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're moving right along here. Um, so mobile sheets, that's your uh, your Android option. I found that for you if you're interested. 
Um, and then going into notation, um, muses, or score, excuse me, muse score is being used by a, a lot of people these days, a million users or more, and it's really about a community. It has a desktop application um, that you can utilize to notate your music, and then you can take that notated music and put it up onto the muse score website. Um, and then it also has an iPad version or it has a tablet version, but the tablet does not have the ability to notate music. I learned that the hard way. You have to just use it to download the PDFs only from that particular site. So I think MuseScore is going to be the next Spotify for sheet music because oh, millions of people are putting their uh, songs up and I'm not sure about the legality of um, creating a cover, like let's say you write an arrangement for your brass band of a, of a tune. So um, this is also going to go into your list of, of resources, but um, I just I kind of have a cautionary attitude about it because the guys that wrote this they got taken down by their previous software program. I think it was ZZ Sounds or something like that. Where basically people are sharing their arrangements. It's not been licensed. They are charging um, people a subscription fee, but I'm not sure if they're paying publishers for all of this. So. Um, I give a cautionary tale. What if you take all this time, you put all your music into MuseScore, and then the site gets taken down because it's full of illegal music? But just to give you an example, so like let's say I'm looking for Killing Me Softly, and um, <laughs> I, I do that search at the top. All of these pieces are, are people taking the time to, to put their sheet music into <coughs> MuseScore. So for instance, here's a little lead sheet. And uh, all of the tunes are downloadable. They're all downloadable as um, XML, PDF, MIDI, or MuseScore. And then um, they're MIDI, so you can play them as well. So uh, I, I don't know, maybe they're getting away with it because it's MIDI, and MIDI is performance. So I don't know. But um, basically, I don't like MuseScore because they charge me a $50 subscription when um, I downloaded a tune onto my iPad and I can't um, unsubscribe, I cannot get refunded for that. So I have some qualms about MuseScore. So cautionary tale. So that's MuseScore. And uh, moving right along, that's a, that is another, kill, uh, sorry, another lead sheet resource for you all. Um, well, where was I? Was it here? Uh, another option for you is this Notion app. And uh, I've been using that. When in a pinch, <laughs> I'd much rather have a piece of paper and a pencil um, than Notion. And it's written, it's created by the same people who did, who do all the pre-sonus. Um, so they have created this sort of like really super commercial app that is really available to any kind of musician. So I wouldn't necessarily use it for an advanced composition. So that includes if I'm a professional trying to create a lead sheet. It's it's. The only, the, one of the most important things about being able to create a good lean sheet is the ability to um, make it four measures per system. And that, uh, I, I have had some problems with getting that to work. So um, I did this on the plane over, and I, I would like to have made it a little bit more organized with my measures, but I couldn't set systems up how I like them. Because if you create a new system, that's great, but what about the, the measure that's hanging over they won't necessarily put that back up where it belongs. So it's got some limitations, but if you're in a pinch and you don't really need to write out your music, like I've done this uh, 15 minutes before a wedding band gig, and I was like, oh crap, I'm listening on my headphones and I'm like typing in here, and it gave me what I needed, so that worked out for me. Um, and I can show you maybe a side view, you can see a little better. There you go. So, you know, it's, it's, it's serviceable. So then I got my 5-4 going, I got my key signature, ties, you know, some basic stuff. So that'll work in a pinch. Um, going on to the other options you have. So uh, I put links up here for Android and, oh, Android sheet music apps. There's a, somebody wrote a blog post, so I put a link up for that for you. Sibelius, obviously. Finale, and then NoteFlight, if you're not familiar with, is another online browser-based composition um, tool. You and this was this I used when I taught high school um, for piano. I had them, you know, create songs using NoteFlight, and then it's it's not very advanced. It's not you know super user-friendly, but it's great for elementary, middle, and high school 
getting them comp composed. It gives pretty much everything that you want them to know. Or it gives you options for everything. Sure. Yeah. In, in, in your experience, there's really no good notation for the apps. Not yet, but I'm not an expert. Maybe is there anybody else that's had a lot of good? I've heard of this, some, a few things, but it seems like going to computer is the way to go, and then you yeah. have to read it. Like that. I haven't found a good notation yet. Yeah. Hope you have, but not yet. It's not there yet. Okay, moving on. Uh, the amazing slow diner. It, okay, so now I'm going to get into your transcribing apps. Um, I've settled in on the amazing slow diner, uh, or a lot of people have, and. What makes this app so helpful is the fact that you can pull from your music library very easily, or you can pull from Spotify. So this, I think that part is really cool because the hardest part to, the hardest part about these transcribing apps is getting the stuff in there half the time. So the, um, I don't know if you can see, but the end and the start, those are in the middle there. That's where the beginning and the end of the, um, the loop is. And so those are helpful. Um, uh, it's pink play. <laughs> All right, so I personally have really um, used, mostly I use Mimikabi. I really like this one because you can see the audio. You can, I like to zoom in and I like to look at the audio <coughs> file and, you know, you can set the um, loop to make it faster or slower, pitch up, pitch down. Same thing with ASD as well. So Mimikabi is my, it's a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit easier to use, but um, ASD will let you pull in from Spotify. That has an advantage. All right, moving on to other uh, transcribing apps. I don't know if you're familiar with the transcribe software, but um, that one is, I'm just going to go to the screenshots. I would use this also when I taught music tech to teach the fundamentals uh, of harmonics. So this is really cool software, okay? They, they, they take the audio file, they analyze all of the waveforms, and then they give you the loudest sounds or frequencies that are being heard. So you see that piano, see those little green dots? So those are the notes that are being played at that point in time. <coughs> so and if you look at the right of the screenshot, um, it says the chord for you. So that's kind of helpful for transcribing sometimes. Um, it has the, the slow down, speed up, and all that kind of stuff. So, but that's only on your uh, desktop computer, not available for apps. So I've used that a few times. Uh, now I'm going to go into apps for band directors. So we're moving along very quickly, but yes. Cloud. Anybody familiar with that? <clears throat> okay, a couple people. 
So this is Harmony Cloud is Stefan Harris's app. And the only thing I'm going to say is that this is kind of cool. They, it gives you um, chords. And you just play along. You can freeze a chord. And it just is a great, you know, like react. You know, I don't know if you can see, but you just kind of react to whatever it is and just play along. The only thing about it is that it's all triads. <laughs> So it's an interesting concept to just focus on triads only. Um, so they have things where you can practice. What is the bass note? So I'll just try to demonstrate real quick.
I was like going through this very quickly. Sight reading machine, uh, you can set it up for your instrument, your, uh, your clef. And this is an easy version. I think you can make them harder. And just play along. Totally random. Okay, so that's really helpful for sight reading. Um, moving on, read rhythm. Um, I this one looks really cool because if you're a band director, you can use this to um, have your students sort of practice. What you do is you just tap along with whatever the beat is. Well, there's a delay. I can't tap on here because it's going to be a half second delay. But just tap along, and uh, it tells you if you're right or wrong. You do it three times. You can put harder music in there. So band directors, do I have any band directors in here? All right. So that might be helpful for you. It's a little bit too easy for the pro level, but for your students, I think it would be very helpful. Um, if you're not familiar, but there is an app for all the fingerings of all the instruments called the Fingering app. And if you're not familiar, there's an app called Scales Lexicon, which has all the scales that you might ever need. Um, and if you're, um, I don't know why that one's not coming up. So, Scales Lexicon, just let me see you guys. So this one has just a lot of scales on it, and everything's kind of written up, so it's helpful for your students. Um, going on, uh, I've had Rhyme Zone recommended to me for people who are lyricists. You can utilize the app to help you find words that rhyme. It's also a browser-based tool. And moving on, I have uh, found this kind of cool app called Clapping Music, where uh, the London Symphony took Steve Reich's clapping music, and they turn it into a game where, uh, you, and I'm not going to demonstrate because there's a delay on the tap, but basically, what? I'm getting that right. I know, it's just so cool. I can't believe I would just sit here and like tap along, but basically it just shifts over, you know, and you, you tap along and it gives you a score if you can keep up with it, so I thought that was really cool. <laughs> clapping music. Um, the next one I want to show you is Group Muse. Uh, anybody here play house concerts? Yeah, so the classical folks have kind of figured this out, and I want to see the jazz folks get on board with it. Group Muse is like meetup for house shows, for chamber music, for duos and trios. So um, I'll just pull it up on my phone. I have it set up here. Group Muse. So I just put my location in, and there's 13 events nearby. These are all house concerts of total strangers. Um, Virginia is for music lovers, string quartet, and West Springfield. So I would love to see jazz musicians that want to play house shows. Maybe we could start putting our shows up here as well. You know, just basically it's an app, and it's just a way to um, put a house show together and see if we can get people up. So this is a really cool app for uh, finding house shows and producing house shows. Uh, all right, moving on. And now I'm into lead sheet resources. Um, I've already mentioned to you the Muse Score website. So this is a website uh, called Scribbit. And once again, I don't know how legal it is. Um, I do know they have a subscription package now, so that might be around longer because maybe they have some sort of licensing. But there is a lot of sheet music up there if you want to search for a lead sheet. Uh, that's one place you can look. Um, another place you can look is the Muse Score and then Google Images I use a lot as well. All right, moving on to the fun stuff. Okay, now we're going to get into pedals, BSCs, and effects. So the first thing I wanted to show you is an amp kit. A lot of people are using amp kit. Um, a lot of guitar players seem to like this one. I have not really gotten into it, but I just wanted to show it to you. Um, no thanks. <laughs> And so you can set up your own um, pedal board system. One I've really gotten into though is called Tone Stack, and I'm actually going to demonstrate that later. Takes a second to load, and so basically, um, uh, uh, there's uh, <laughs> evil twin. Evil twin, evil twin. So uh, there's all these effects on there, and you have amps, cabinets, distortion, shuttles. And now it's going to be back. Okay, sorry. But you get the sense of it, right? <laughs> so I have some things set up on there that I really enjoy using. Um, I like to 
be able to bring an iPad instead of a bunch of puddles. Uh, so um, that is the uh, tongue stack. Uh, what I see used a lot now, there's two that are being used in live performance, the Cantabile, or Cantabile, I don't know if I said that right. Um, and that app is being used by keyboard players as a VST processor for live performance. Um, and then the one I've seen with Mac, same thing. These are both only for the laptop or the desktop, but um, Mac users are using this main stage now. And that gives you, uh, basically, I see in the wedding bands now that they'll bring their really nice, actually, their digital keyboard, like the piano. So they get the feel that they want, and then they just plug it into the, the laptop. They have their laptop on a, you know, a stool next to them, and then they can utilize the laptop for all the sounds. And then you don't have to carry multiple rigs. So, that's the uh, that's the big uh, thing right now. So I'm not going to demonstrate those, but I am going to get into synthesizers. Yay, man, we're going good. All right, so uh, so I did teach music tech for ten years, and so when I taught that, I um, I wanted to get them into synthesizers. So I'm going to kind of go through it pedagogically. So first, I would teach a little bit about physics of sound, and then I would just kind of um, create, tell them how to create a sound from scratch. So, um, and this is for all of you, if you've ever thought about teaching uh, music tech or you want to get into some of the audio production stuff, um, this is one, one pedagogy app that I would do. So you can build additional uh, sound waves, lay them on top, and I have a, a sawtooth wave and a sound wave, and I can make the, um, the wave whatever I want it to be, and then I can kind of like change things around, and you know, the square wave, I explain, you know, that's just the fundamental with every other one harmonic and you know you go through and I just kind of teach them all the different ways just focusing on the wave and these are basically oscillators and then I take it into GarageBand which has the Alchemy synth which is uh it's actually a pretty cool um yes there's a delay there's, it's actually a, a good teaching tool um it has a lot of the synthesizer functions <coughs> that you would want so there's my sound, and then I, I have this, this thing at the top, and this is also on the um, iPad as well. So uh, you have your delay, your reverb, your cutoff, and your resonance. Your resonance is all those like really high pitched sounds. So let's see if I can go this way. So I can play around with the cutoff on that. The LFO is your your, um, oops, I lost my, ah, there it is, oh no. I'm not super familiar with the iPad version. Um, oh, it has the fretboard for the piano. Oh, the LFO is the one that goes, it's like going in and out, you know. Um, <laughs> so I was playing around with that, and now that's why it has that sound. And then you have your LFO rate. Um, over here you have a couple of um, XY axes you can use for unlimited combinations. And the one on the right is the uh, flanger and the cutoff. The one on the left is the sequencer and the crossfade. So you can just play around with that and just get different sounds. And then I also use this to teach a text, decay, sustain, release, ADSR, which is the sound, the initial sound. So the attack. <coughs> so once they sort of master all of that kind of stuff, then I take them into, or I would take them into if I was teaching them, I would take them into the iMini, which I cannot broadcast this story <coughs> right now for some reason, but basically, uh, if you're familiar with synthesizers, the iMini is the uh, mini mode in an app, and it has the exact same all the same knobs and buttons, and it has, you know, oh, you can, uh, <laughs> you can uh, plug your little um, keyboard into the iPad and, and basically play around with sound. So that's kind of like a graduated way of teaching synthesis to your students. Um, you know, mod just adding ways together and then processing them with a really simple uh, alchemy and then taking them, into, taking them into this, which is the same thing, but has a lot more options for you. So, I just wanted to show that to you to hopefully inspire you to teach that to your students or get something going for your students because um, I just, once they figured out how to use the synthesizers when I taught them, they loved it. <laughs>
And they were just, they could just play the sounds all day, you know, it's totally, totally fun. Um, so that was, those are my synthesizers that I wanted to talk about. Um, does anybody else have any other synthesizers? I've used some other ones, but I wasn't, I haven't been super impressed. So I don't know, what, what else is out there? Anybody else interested in that? Core, Music tech? Core potential production. Oh, okay. I'll check that out. <coughs> I looked at the Yamaha one. Sorry. I thought that, I felt like the garage did a little better. All right, so moving on, looping apps. Um, one of the more popular looping apps is the Loopy HD. And um, I don't know if you've seen this. And then the, have, has every, anybody here seen the uh, Jimmy Fallon demo of this? No. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> I was going to show you that, but I don't have time. So, um, but that—that's if you have a chance, you know, just do a search for um, Jimmy Kimmel um, demonstrating that particular app, and uh, you'll see what it has. Um, you can just use the, the looping app to create the music. Um, so I'm running on over GarageBand. Um, I don't know if I have time to show you the live loops on there. I do have a few minutes. So. Um, Basically, the way that GarageBand works is that you have, you know, the option. <coughs> this is going to be really loud. I'm going to turn it down. I don't remember to pick up. But you have the option of creating loops, and they're all little boxes. And each box, each vertical box is a. I'm going to go to the grid view. Each vertical box is um, like four measures, and then each. I don't know if you can see on here, but basically, it's just. Each one of these is a different sound, and each one lasts for four measures. So, you know, if you. So 
it might be an option for you. It's a $50 app, um, and it's pretty powerful, but you can do it with it. Orion Pro. So check that out. Where are we at? Quarter zone? All right. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, well, I think it's about time. I think I have time to just do a quick demo. Um, I'm going to just play a little bit for you. Kind of keep on schedule here. So I'm going to demonstrate what I wanted to do is just demonstrate uh, an example of what you could do. And this is about three minutes, so don't mind me doing my thing here. So I'm, gonna, I'm playing the tune for you today. I wrote this not as a loop-based tune, but I'm going to turn it into one. And before I play anything, I'm going to make sure I have everything.